Coaches, thank you for attending tonight. Welcome. This is Michael Cantrell with Championship Coaching Systems, and we've got a webinar tonight for you from Coach Bruce Cobley. Uh, it's entitled Sally, Devastating Counter Draw with RPOs to Protect, and uh, great content lined out. Bruce is uh, very excited to share. We are recording this session. If for some reason you have some of your staff that couldn't be on that you want to hear the session, uh, it should be up sometime later tomorrow on the site, and uh, you can watch it from there. A couple of announcements before we get started. First thing is you may uh, have noticed that we have a new site up for, for the coach um, at championshipsystems.com. Uh, so whenever you click on the coach's logo, the new site is up for, for, the, uh, for the offense. We've also uh, been in quite a few discussions with Coach, and we've decided to go ahead and, and, and settle on the name Jet Offense, since integral to everything that we do is the Jet Formation. Uh, so, so Jet Offense is what we're calling it now. And then there's some new content up on the site. Everybody was you know, want, wanting to know when the new content from the uh, Denver Deep Dive Clinic would be up, and that is up on the site t uh, today. Um, if you go to championshipcoachingsystems.com slash gun hyphen hybrid, again, championshipsystems.com slash gun hyphen hybrid, uh, you will find the content there. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking at it right now and all the sessions are there and they're numbered in order so that you can watch them if you want to. That's over two days of content on the new uh, the new developments in the Cobbly football system, now the Jet Offense, uh, so gun hybrid um, content. Lastly, uh, obviously with the new content, you probably want the new playbook, and Coach has been working on that fast and furious. Those playbooks aren't easy to put together. They are a big undertaking, but uh, Coach says that we should have that done, um, and a new playbook here within a week, and it is a, a, a minified version, so so it is the gun hybrid content, and each play is diagrammed and will uh, allow you to, to use the new content. So that should be up hopefully here within the week, and we'll send out an email announcement about that when that happens. Lastly, before we get started, uh, I'm sure you're going to have questions over tonight's content. And in your GoToWebinar panel, there is a blue uh, box. It is one, two, three, four, five down. It says questions on it. Go ahead and type your questions in there at any time during the presentation, and at the end of the presentation, uh, we'll ask those to coach and get those answered for you. And uh, if for some reason your question isn't answered or you think of one afterwards, be free to email me, and you can email me at questions at championshipsystems.com. Again, questions at championshipsystems.com, and we'll get those answered for you. Outside of that, I think we're ready to get started. Coach, you good to go? Yes, I am. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm excited about sharing this tonight. I appreciate all the coaches that came on to hear it. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do talk tonight is about Sally. Um, you know, the Sally was a old wing tee play developed by Ted Kemsky and Greg Perry in that group uh, when they were at Delaware. And so we've run it for many years only. Now we've changed it quite dramatically, so it's really a different kind of play. We've got, but the concept was the same. The way that we read it is the same. Uh, the way we think about the play is basically the same. It's just blocked differently, and it's now presented quite a bit differently. Uh, we call it first, uh, you might see up there it says CFC Oregon. We call it Oregon because, uh, you know, in our fast tempo high, uh, wing T where we're going no huddle, high tempo, you know, we only use one word as our play calls. We don't have the old wing T. Uh, verbiage that we used to, and we call it Oregon because this is, all our counters are O's. So we have two big counters, one is Oregon and one is Ohio, and the, our biggest one actually is Sally, and our second one is like a kind of tray type uh, counter, and we call that Ohio. So the kids know that it's going to be a counter, it's going to be opposite. Uh, so that's kind of um, how we call the play right now. Uh, any more about the tempo, I think I have it all from the website, and then as Mike said, we had that deep dive, and I explained it on that video, uh, you know, with a video of how I explained the tempo in pretty good detail. Uh, first, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about this, and it's, uh, we call it Oregon, and of course, I just explained that, is that it's our terminology, it's any O word means opposite. You know, it's just like uh, in the old days, we'd say Sally or whatever at, we'd say at 
a number, and that was just the at part would mean that it was a counter. And so now the, um, we have two primary counters, and our A or B gap counter is um, Oregon or Sally, and our C gap counter is um, Ohio. And then again, um, you know, down the road, if you want to look at the buck sweep and the Ohio are, are up there on the website. But we run buck sweep, and that's really a D gap counter. We have motion that go, and we, we have motion go one way, and we run buck sweep away. So it's kind of like our three counters. So those are what, what they're like. Now, Sally Oregon was our best play for a carry this year. We had 17 runs of 45 yards or more. It's it's the easiest play we have uh, to block by far, and we have a couple simple rules. Now, for those guys that aren't in the gun, this is a great play either way. You can run this play under center, in pistol, in gun. It's just got to be a little bit different blocking uh, in the gun and a different guy carrying the gun. When you're under center and you're doing Sally, uh, the halfbacks are carrying the ball, or if you're in pistol, the halfbacks are carrying the ball. In gun, that's pretty much impossible, so the tailback carries the ball. So that's a little bit what the difference is in what Sally is, under center and pistol, versus how it's blocked in the gun. We still have the same blocking rules, though, and the, our line is, and the old line is pretty much blocking the same. And the basic rules are, number one, if we have a one technique, you know, like a three and a one and a four down defense, you know, we're going to double the one technique. And then everybody else fans. That's the rule. Easy. Double the one, everybody fan. If we have a three down defense with a nose guard, we're going to block the nose any way it wants to go, and everybody fans. That's the rules. Pretty easy, pretty simple, easy to carry out. Plus, when you're fan blocking, you've got people walled. So when you get slants, blitzes, you know, angles, you can wall them off rather than having to fight some different way of doing it. So it's, it's, a, it's a real easy care type blocking scheme. Okay, again, like I said, you can do it in gun and under center or in pistol. Uh, so you can do it all that way that's blocked the same. And then, like, like it says down there, you double the nose. Um, and the G defense fan everybody else, and then you single the nose guard and fan everybody else in an odd defense. Okay, now, under center, it's like this. And we used to call the play, like this, for example, is blue, which is our blue formation, and we still call it blue or bluer. And then it would be 29, which is jet motion, Sally at three, which would tell us that we're going back to the three hole. All right, now what we do is we would just call this play um, Oregon, even, and you know we go like we go like uh, blue. Um, we just go blue Oregon even. That's it. And then um, we would know that um, it's opposite from the call, which even is to the right, and we just go left. So it's a little easier to call without a new terminology. Anyway, if you were in the center, we put this guy in motion, and every time we put the man in motion, we always snap the ball directly behind the quarterback. Okay, uh, we're gonna block the nose. Everybody else is going to fan. Now, this is not how we do it. We would fan this guy. Uh, this is what we're doing, Sally at three. Uh, let me go over the blocking in a minute uh, with another one here. I'm sorry. Here it is in pistol. So what we do is um, in pistol, we're going to put the motion through the middle of the quarterback and the fullback run into the sideline. We're going to counter with the wing back. So he would reverse out, and the fullback would block the backside linebacker. Because of the rocket motion or the jet motion, the front side backer is going to run out, so we do not block him. So the second he runs out and he makes the play, that's our counter call. Everybody else is going to fan, so we fan each player and we get them walled, block the nose where he wants to go, and we come back inside. Okay, so that's how we do it in the pistol. Okay, now I'm going to talk mostly about how we do it in the gun. Uh, we attack off tackle, and this is kind of how we read it. We're going to um, we're going to attack uh, off tackle with all our other plays, like our, our power row or our jet or whatever we're going to do, our buck sweep. And as soon as the backer tries to make the play, the front side backer, by running over the top, and he makes the play, we know that a gap is now uncovered, and we are going to counter with Sally immediately. All right, so this makes play calling easy. And that's what I try to do with the whole offense when it's sort of a punch counter. If a player makes a play, uh, away from his gap responsibility, we have a corresponding play to make him hurt. Vice versa, we have plays for inside pressure, outside pressure, rotation slants. This is the play 
when the front side backer is overplaying jet or overplaying the power O, just cranks out of the box, and now we have a five-man box, and this is an awesome, easy play to hurt that and to make him stay home so your outside runs are better. So that's really how that is um, how that's done. All right, so again, it makes uh, you know selection and adjustments easy and immediate. Okay, formations. Sally's good in all formations, really good. But for us, our, we, the, the ones that we do best in is green and black, which is when we're running uh, with a sniffer. And uh, if you haven't seen that before, I kind of will show it to you tonight. We're now uh, in the in our um, in our offense. We use a sniffer back like Auburn, although they don't have this play. And then actually, this is the best play that we have. And red or and blue, or which is when we have our uh, our tight end in a wide pro set with a wide slot. And uh, it's always best if there's a, a tight end in the game, but you can run it without that. You can run any formation, but these these formations are the best that, that I think that we run. Okay, here is green formation. So for us, green is we're going to have the our Y, which is our tight end. He goes to the sniffer formation. We bring our A and our B back on the same side. The B back is up in the line of scrimmage, and the A is back, and our X is over here. And so what we're going to do is... We are going to um, block it like we always do. And here's an odd defense. We would block the nose, fan everybody else. Okay, and the sniffer would go back and counter block the backside linebacker. We hope that this guy is going, the front side backer is going to run out. So that's how it looks like. Now we're going to do a little bit different techniques depending on whether we have motion or we don't have motion. Okay, now. We have RPOs off all our um, runs. So we're going to have RPOs. We're going to have our perimeter players are going to run passing concepts so that if somebody comes off on a blitz or somebody comes uncovered, we're simply going to throw the ball out there to them and we're not going to carry through with a play. So I'm going to kind of go over what our RPOs are as well. Okay, now we can run it with, with and I'm going to go how we do each one. We can run it with motion or without motion. Uh, now we can run Sally with motion, and when we do the with motion, usually that play side linebacker is probably going to get out of there pretty good. Now the motion could be jet, it could be rocket, whatever. And usually when we run that, that backer is the guy that's trying to make the play, and he's screaming out of the box, and we want to stop him from do that. So what that does, what the jet does, is make linebackers run laterally. And so when they run laterally, and the front side guy runs off the box, and you have the sniffer or the tight end. Uh, or the fullback, if you're under center, blocking the backer, backside backer that's shuffling, going lateral instead of filling, you got a heck of a play, and he has a real hard time doing anything uh, or, or getting off that block. Now, uh, the puller, for us, the puller is going to be, if we are in green and black, the sniffer is the puller, okay? And what he's going to do is last year we didn't do this and we found that some people were reading, reading our sniffer a little bit and it would have been better. We're going to make a hard counter step. So we're going to make a hard jab step with our outside foot and that should freeze the backer and that's what we started doing in the spring and that's worked really well. And redder and bluer, now the tight end really can't pull effectively. So if we're in redder and bluer and we have a tight end and a you know, regular pro type formation, the offensive tackle will pull. And we do the same thing. We are going to take a jab step with him as well because if it's an odd defense and there's a defensive tackle on our tackle, our offensive tackle, that jab step looks like jet and it stalls and we have an easy, he can't run the circle on us. So when we have a sniffer, he's going to be the puller. And when the puller does that, he is, if we are in a G defense, he is going to read that double team. He's going to read the double on the nose, and he's going to fit either inside and outside, wherever that shows, and he's going to go up in the backside linebacker. Uh, there's no sniffer. The tackle becomes the puller, and he is the one that's going to do the exact same thing. He is going to fold around, read the one or the nose, and he's going to fit to the backside linebacker. Again, technique is we're always going to take a jab step, so that will freeze the, the, the linebacker key in it, or if he's covered, it will freeze the covered defender. Okay, the first rule is we're going to double the one technique or block a nose wherever he wants to go. And if there's a player in the play side A gap, that guard uh, center is going to double, okay? 
Uh, if it's a nose, everybody's going to uh, he wants going to block him anyway and wants to go. And usually against these three three teams, which this is a great play against, because every time you run jet motion, that stack back it runs off and you got a five man box. Um, usually, what happens with them is um, is uh, with that three 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 guy is he he's just he's just going to go lateral. We're going to get up on him really quick. So um, it's and it's real easy to fan those three three teams because they're always pinching on the nose. That guy, we never know whether he's going to go. I mean, that guy will slant play side or back side because they're filling with those stack, you know, their, their middle backer. And they do all these, you know, tap stunts. So you can really kill them on those little tap stunts they run if, uh, you know, if they're doing that kind of look to you. All right, our double team is we do our double team a little bit different. I learned this from Bobby Wiley that was with the Oakland Raiders, and he's now with Ed, Edmonton Oilers, I think. And, um, what we want to do is, you know, we used to do uh, a post lead with our double team, and now what we want to do is we want to do kind of a lateral step so that um, both our feet are together and our hips are together, so we get a direct push straight up the field. When we used to post lead, we'd have one guy post and one guy take a 45 degree step, and he would always knock the post player off. I've watched a lot of film, not only whether it's my film or somebody else's film about doing that post lead the old way where we post one guy and we come down with a lead at a 45 degree angle and that is not anywhere near as good a technique as the one we're doing now. And I want to kind of show you this. And so we're here, we kind of walking them through. So we go one, we want those feet to be really tight. We're going to bring our hands back and we're going to get two shoulder blocks and we are going to try to get our hips as tight together as possible. And by having these two steps, we have now got we want to get hip to hip. We then want to contact and then duck that thing right down the field. So that's kind of what we want to look like on a double team. Now here we're going to kind of half speed it. So they go, we just come down, pull, and then try to duck walk it and try to get those hips as tight together as we can. Uh, you may or may not want to do that. For us, it's been a game changer. We've really been good. So on our double teams now, this is how it's going to look. So here it is live. Now what we do is we go one on one, two days a week during special teams period. And usually our D line and O line and aren't um, participating in a whole bunch of those special teams unless it's PAT or field goal. So we got a two about a 20 minute period down here where we can basically get after it. So this guy right here, uh, when I was working with Mr. Heigl, he's He's our D-line coach, our D-coordinator. He's working the double team with the D-guy, and we're blocking it. So we're getting a great look. So what we're here we're going to do is we want to get these feet, try to get them tight together. And when you go live, it's a little harder. So you want to get those feet a little tighter, get those hips a little tighter. But you can see when you get that, you get a great drive and a really good down walk where you can put that guy right on his butt. So uh, that's what we want. Now here, this is what we used to do, and this is what used to happen. We're trying to post them. And then the outside guy is trying to lead, and we get that look, and we get that kind of look, and we do not want to get that kind of look. So here, this would, this is the center, this is the guard. We're getting a G defense with a one technique on the backside, and we want this man double teamed. And I don't want him to post and him to come down on a 45 and whip or knock him off the block. I want a lateral step upfield. I want a lateral step upfield, and I want them to drive him back and put him on the ground. So this is kind of what it looks like. Now, we could have got a little bit better step and a little tighter hips, but their hips are tight, and we're trying to duck it, and that's the that's the that's the look that we're trying to get. Okay, now that's our double team. Next is our pass run combos. And as with all turnover runs, we uh, we have a rule we have rules for our internal runs. Now, our com we have combos in every play, but we have rules. If we do not call anything, these are the rules that the players run. Now we have added though eight combination throws to all our inside runs. So now we have our rules that we call whether or not um, that they're going to run no matter what happens. And there are quick screens and our out in our hitches. But now we have eight other combos that we use. Uh, we have NFL names to them, and we can also call those with our inside runs. And I'm going to have that up on the website soon. I'm going to have all those combo runs up, and it's all going to be written in the playbook. And you can have eight to ten different ways to throw the ball off your inside runs. 
Right now, though, these are our rules. This is what we're going to do if we don't call anybody. If we have a single receiver, and this is in any run that we have, he is going to run a three-step speed out all right, every time there's a single receiver. If the ball is on the hash and that's the receiver's into the boundary, he'll run a hitch. And they're going to do that every time there's a single receiver. If we have two by two, we're going to run the bubble to the side of where the tailbacks align. Unless the backs are the uh, inside guys up and the outside guys back, then they'll run the quick screen. If we have two by two and the two guy, the two receivers are away from the tailback, they're going to read the quick screen. And our tailback, our quarterback is going to read the perimeter, and he's going to decide whether he's going to throw or not. A lot of times, what our, we'll tell our guy to do is, if we are uncovered, or if the force player is three yards inside the second eligible receiver or the bubble guy, he is going to throw the ball every time. If he show, if there's any show of outside blitz, we're going to get rid of the ball. If it's to a single receiver, if that receiver is nine yards or more deep. We throw the ball every single time to the wideout. All right, so that's how we're going to read the uh, pass run combos. Okay, now, on our calls, Oregon, with no motion, says, hey, we're going to slide and dive. We have done that. We're going to counter step it. We were sliding and dive, and now we're going to counter step. But what we're going to do with no motion, we want our quarterback to sprint. So he's going to sprint out because with no motion, when we weren't sprinting, that front side backer wasn't running over the top. He was kind of just falling back inside. The second we turned and go like we were going to sprint out, and the tailback takes a counter step, it looks like we were on one of our sprint pass games, that front side linebacker ran out, and now it's a counter draw rather than it's a counter run. A lot of times we'll just call it duck, because it's Oregon. If we say duck, 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 we want him to sprint instead of sitting on the, um, uh, sitting on the jet look when we have motion. We have a pass combo, and the thing about no mo is as he starts to sprint with usually a two receiver side, it gives him a couple of sec, it gives him a second to kind of look at the perimeter and see uh, if he wants to throw it out there. It gives him a little bit of time, so that's pretty good there. All right, so here's our no mo, and if we're going to have no mo against this 50 defense, all right, our rule is this. Now it would be bubble if that. That, this B back was off the line and A was on. Because he's on, we're going to run the quick screen to it. Okay? He is going to sprint because there's no mo, so he's going to sprint out like this, just like it's a sprint out pass. All right? The tailback's going to counter step, and he is going to read the block of the nose guard, the, the center. The center is going to block the nose wherever he wants to go. Everybody else is going to fan. So he fans. He fans on this guy maybe coming off. Now, if he goes into pass route, he'll come back and help us. And we will not we will not block him. We expect this man here to run out, okay, or to drop when um when that when that uh, quarterback goes to sprint. If this man here is nine yards or more, we're gonna throw that out every time. If the ball was on the boundary, then he's gonna run a hitch. Okay. If this man here comes inside three yards or more, or we are going to throw this quick screen right now, right out here. Now, a little tip about the quick screen. In order to run the quick screen, we must have this man on the inside line. He must go down the line of scrimmage until he gets to the feet of the, of the wide receiver and come vertically up the field and block the outside shoulder of that corner. Our quick screen man is going to push to the sideline as far as possible, and he will push no matter what with him trying to work that outside shoulder, and he will just run out of bounds if he knocks him, and he will at the last minute cut it back. Never will we allow him to cut it back early. We want to run. If he gets his shoulder blocked, we have a giant butt. So that's how we're going to kind of call this quick screen. Okay, the tailback is going to read the nose. He's going to come up uh, the field. All right, so that's kind of how we're running it with no mo. Now with motion, okay, here with motion, usually if it's two like this way and we run motion to the counter, uh, which we don't do all that much, quite honestly, this guy usually will run out.
And him coming across is who he'll probably get blocked like this. We're going to read the nodes and look. Now, when we run the motion, okay, when we run this jet motion like this, that leaves a single receiver. So now he knows he must run a speed out. Unless he's in the boundary, where he'll run a quick hitch. All right. The man to the side of the field is going to block, and the motion man is going to bubble, and we have a key to what we call a bubble screen. So we have a bubble screen on the side with motion. We have quick out or out away on this side. Okay, he can read that. The uh, sniffer is going to make a counter step. He's going to come and either block the backer or get this backside linebacker coming across. So that's what it's going to kind of look like with, um, with motion. Now the other thing is, when we have motion, sorry, we have motion here with our motion back, and for us this is a rip and Liz. We call our motion rip and Liz, and we signal it with just like we're ripping it, like we're ripping a piece of paper. And if it's Liz, we make a, like a choke sign across our neck like Queen Elizabeth cuts your head off. So, and our player has to know whether it's going to be motion where we're snapping it on the outside part of the tackle or if we're going to let them extend past the, past the center. So it's always ripping Liz, and they just got to know what kind of motion it is depending on what the play is. We call them to say we have to have motion for success. Now, we are going to snap the ball, though, when we have this motion like this, right on the outside foot. And when you do that, it perfectly times up with the tailback counter. The quarterback, when he has motion, he's not going to shuffle. He's just going to sit down. He's going to bend down really low and get a kind of a skin-to-skin -skin, you know, proximity fake and then hand the ball off to the QB. If it's no mo, he's sprinting. So he's faking the jet on this one. And with no more, he's faking the spread out. Okay. Um, next. Um, okay. Here it is uh, with um, with our team. And now, right now, we're in. Um, we're in, this is for us is green. Now we've called this green Oregon. It says odd up there. It's really yeah. It's green Oregon odd. So we're going to have motion, and that's the odd is to the right, or to the left, I'm sorry. But because it says O opposite, he's going to counter step and go back to the right. Okay, now the sniffer, he's got a line for success. So if we call this green, Liz, Oregon, even, he'd have to line up over here and go back that way. But he knows that it's odd, so he lines up to the, to the left, and he's going to go back to this side. Now, anytime we see this, anytime we see one backer in the box, we got, we know we got this damn thing, all right, because there's no way that they can cover it with one guy in a box. And this is that Pro 4-3 we're going to take stack back and walk him up, try to bring him off the edge. So we're going to go in motion. There is no backer to run out now because basically we have a five-man box because we're fanning everybody, and we got everybody blocked. So here's the motion. We're going Liz motion. Snap it right there. So he's timing up. There's the counter step. Sniffer's going to read the double team because it's a G defense, and he's going to come back and block. He's going to come back and block this man right here. All right, so there's the motion timing it up. And he's up. You can see he's right up on that backer, and we get a 35-yard run. All right, we have it in the end zone shot. But we can see it a little bit better. All right, so here it is, and now this is not a good look. Any because they have a two tech, they have a head up technique right here, and they have a three to the side that we're going to. So basically, you know, this is just, I mean, the, the center doesn't have anybody to block almost. So here's the motion. He snaps it. They're going to all fan because he's outside. So we have them totally fan blocked. We got him fanned, and there is a hole. I mean, that's pretty darn wide from here to here with our sniffer going to come right up on this backer right here. So there's no way he can see him. So this is a huge, huge play for us. This is basically our best counter and our best play. All right, now here we got black rip. So now we're going to rip it. And when we rip it like this, Okay, we rip the motion like that. 
Okay, that leaves a single receiver, so we know he's going to run the out. We're going to block with this backside guy, and now we just have bubble screen over here with the motion back. All right? Again, we're going to block the nose. Everybody's going to um, block on. So everybody's going to fan after that. Okay, so here it is against an odd defense. It's kind of hard to see because it's a little far away. There's the motion. Okay, there's the counter. We block the nose where he wants to go, and I think we have it in a tight shot where we'll be able to see a little bit better. Okay, uh, well, let me go back. Okay, here's tight shot. Okay, no, it's not a nose. We got a, we got a one technique and a three. That's usually what we see when we get four down. So that means we have a right here. We're going to have a double with these two guys. He's fanning. He's fanning. He's going to counter step now, and he's up on this man. You're going to see this guy run out with the motion. He's going to take a counter step, which is going to look like jet, and away we're going to go. So uh, here's what it looks like. There's the motion. Snap. He sits on the motion. There's the fan. Fan. There's the double team. Snipper's going right to this man, right here, and this man's running out. So there's the hole right there. It just shows right wide open. Now, what happened was um, this man right here fans. Oops. Let me get back to that. Oh, let me just get back there real quick. Uh, this guy right here, this tackle, he should be fan and he should hold his block. He does not. He lets him slide off and we got a touchdown. So he's got him, but he's got to keep his head outside and he would have had him for a really big play if he had done that. Okay, so uh, next one. Okay, this is, we're in black, so it's the left, rip, Oregon even, so it means he's come back this way, so see it's a snipper. Uh, we got a Kind of, we got a three down defense, so he blocks the nose where he wants to go. And we got a pretty big touchdown play. I'm going to get that with a tight shot. Okay, so the tight shot. Here we are. Now, against a odd defense or a three down, there's the nose. We're going to block him any way he wants to go. Usually when we get motion from this side like this, he's going to slant that way. We get that nine times out of ten. He's simply going to easily block, fan him out. He's going to fan this guy out. This man's going to run out. And then the sniffer's going to block back on this guy. All right, so let's see if that's what happens. So there's the motion. Okay, there's the rotation. There's all the rotation that we're getting, so there's no secondary player. Here's the nose slanting. Easy wall. There's the fan here. Fan here. Fan here. Snipper basically doesn't even have to block the backer. And we got a big run. This is so easy to run, so easy for your team to understand, so easy for them to block. All right. Uh, let's go to the next play. Okay. Uh, black rip, Oregon even again. So we got rip, offset. We got a Regular 4-3. That's just kind of having a good tailback, to be quite honest with you. But uh, we'll kind of take a look at that. Uh, let's get to the next one. Um, all right, now, now we're going to go into a different formation. So that's the kind of that's the counter with the sniffer. And then of course you have all the pass combos off it. So if he doesn't like what he sees, or he gets some kind of uh, outside pressure, you're going to throw the football. But now we're going to do it out of a kind of a what we call as redder. Now, if it was old kind of wing tee, this would we'd have a tight slot here, like right. I mean, a tight wing like this, and that for us is red. We want to bring him out wider. We call that redder. If this is a tight slot here, it would be red. Or we'd, and if we want to bring him out wider, we just put the fur on it, just like we do when we have um, we do our loose formation. So we're going to put him in jet motion across the formation. Now, it's all going to be the same. The only difference now is the tackle's going to pull. So the tackle's going to counter step right there. 
and he's going to read the clock of the nose, he's going to take the backside linebacker, and everybody else is the same. Difference is, looks like a different play. Great play to uh, our counter on Jeff. Okay, so here it is where we have it in uh, red formation. So we're going to put that guy in motion full speed. We're going to snap it when he gets to the outside for the tackle. Now there is everybody fanning. He just reads the block, and we get a pretty big play. I think we got a tight shot here. I don't know. No, I guess not. Okay. So here's another one. Uh, we're in redder. We're going to rip like it's jet. We snap it right at the outside foot of the tackle. Um, everybody's going to fan. And we got a pretty good hole opening there. And I think we got. Let's get to a tight shot. All right, so here. Oh, that's a sniffer. Let me, let me go back to uh, Redder. Here we go, Redder. Uh, there we go. All right, so now we're red. We got the motion. We got bubble here. Quick out out here. Here's the end zone shot. Let's see if we can just see that real quick. Kind of funky. All right, not going to be able to see that. Okay. Um, okay, here's Redder again. We're going to rip the halfback. And we got a pretty big play. Let me see if we get the end zone shot. Okay, here's the end zone shot. So there's where we snap the ball. So we put them in motion. We're going to snap the ball right here. Okay, we have now got, and if anybody does this, it's going to be a real problem. We got a outside shade on this side, and for some strange reason, and a lot of people do it, they got an outside shade here. So basically, we got fan here, fan here, um, or he's going to fan him out. Uh, we're all going to fan out this way. We're going to block him, and we're going to have a hole that's going to be huge. This man should run out. Okay, we'll see what happens. There's the motion. There's, he slants, so we wash him. And there's a big play back there. Let's, let's go back. You're going to see that. Let's see if we can see that. Okay. Here's the th he's three. He's going to slant, so he's just going to wash him. So he washes him because the center read no one technique, so he fanned that way. So he went down, he washed him, no big deal. Tackle pulls, gets up, there's the backer, he's up on the backer, there's the hole, it's pretty big, and we got a big run. So uh, they lined him three and they slanted to a one, but you know, we're just gonna wash him. Here it is again, and now it's in bluer, so it's, which is um, pro left. We're going to snap it on the outside foot. Tackle's going to pull. Get up on the backside linebacker. We've got another huge play. That's that, I think. Yeah, let's see it from the end zone. All right now, good thing here is what I want you to watch is, if you can, is the tackle's right here. And we have an odd defense. So we have a defender, a deep tackle lined up on him. So that jab step's going to make him step outside. Let's see if uh, that's what happens. Is the jab? Oh, they don't do it. He comes down hard, but we got him walled because we're fanning. The nose is slanting to motion side, so there it is. There's a slant. We got him walled by fanning, so we got everybody picked off, and now we got a blitz by 22. That's just an easy trap block, so he traps him. And there's the hole. I mean, if you were in the gun or anything, I would. Use this play no matter what. I mean, this is really an easy play. Now, so for here, there's the motion. We're going to snap it here. This man here is going to run a speed out. Or he's into the boundary, so he runs the hitch. We're going to run the bubble out this way. Here's the tackle pulling. He's taking a jab step. Tackle pulls. We double the nose, and they put him on the ground. And we get a pretty good play. I think we have an end zone shot. So we're going to see a good double team because here is the... One technique. Rule is double the one, fan everybody else. 
So there's the one. We're going to see how our double is going to be. Boom, right there. Pretty good. 